Star Trek Live HQ. It's Tuesday, and we are finally live. Well, are you spoiled, Star Trek? A secret, secret AA. That's um, ask anything. Today on, on Trekland Tuesdays, live with me, Dr. Trek. Larry Machek coming at you from the heart of Trek land through Portal 47 for some sanity, clarity, and, and picture and all things starting Star Trek. Hey, this is uh, exciting, exciting. Hello, everybody. I'm finally back in the home studio here, back in actual, actual Trek land HQ. And I know I know because Plushy she McCoy is back there. Um, it's on a Tuesday. We're, we're really here, uh, rested, refreshed. Vegas is behind us. This is my COVID jail. Uh, better half is recovering from, from her hip surgery. And here we are. And why in the, in the world am I asking a question like, are you spoiled Star Trek? Because here's where it comes from. I've since thought of a couple topics that would be fun to get into. But it really, really struck me as I was wondering what to finally address live here back at home. Are you getting a little humdrum there, <laughs> fans? You know, Lord X is just percolating along. You know, there's another string of shows. You just had, if not an underwhelming Star Trek day, at least the fat and sassy one a couple of weeks ago. Ago, it's more Star Trek, Star Trek coming. There's going to be Star Trek at New York Comic Comic Con. That last stop stop of the year. Big headline lines. Add Star Trek, Star Trek vase. <laughs> Destination Trek in Europe. Europe is up this week weekend. It's a little, little diminished, but still, it, it's there. Um, um, anybody like, you know, you know, lean, mean, mean, hungry machine, are just a ho hawing. You know the the re reviews count. Every everybody does their podcasts. Everybody does their re review shows. We all, we all talk. Every, everybody goes and connects the, the old with the new track. I don't know. Is there, is there something? I'm not I'm asking for, for crises and controversy. Oh, no, no. I'm not com complaining about that. But I'm really curious today. And you know what? It's episode 275. Oh, my gosh. So it's kind of a mini landmark. And uh, I just thought today, somewhere between wondering what was out there, thinking what was on everybody's mind. and Think, think, what a good day, twice told, for an AM, AM, no, not the, Amer the American Medical Association, the modern sense, uh, uh, asked me anything. So that's, so that's what we're doing today. I have a couple of things I, I mentioned, though. If you uh, have not heard about it or seen it, there are still a few co copies, I'm going to say this right off the top, of Andy Ken Kindred's book from Slavery to Star Trek. Um, this is the one she, she signed. Uh, she a few of these left at her website, slaverylaverydetrek.com. You can get it signed, not signed. Uh, then you know, you know, thing is in there. So check that that out. There you there you go. Uh, um, I just say a shout out also a little R.I.P. -P Marva Hicks, who among her, her other things in her career, she played Tapel, two Vox wives, wives three or four times on Star Trek Voyager. Sometimes she's just a mem memory tape. Sometimes she was a hologram. But um, a, a little, uh, you know, you know, a little part of her car career was on starships. So a chunk of Star Trek, Star Trek Voyager. I haven't gone to see um, see the tweets here while we were getting things, things getting the rust knocked off of everything here in in Trend HQ. So uh, there's there's a little bit of stuff going on, going on. But I'm curious today. Today, happy 75 us, and uh, I want I want to see where every, how everybody's doing doing. What, what's going on with all of us at large? And for, for one, it's been a while. I mean, we were off last week. I had <laughs> distraction of a good kind to do. And before that, a couple of weeks, didn't feel it feel at home. Although, hey, I can, I can do anything on that. So it's all good. It's all good. It's just back, back to have everything reset and back with this again. So I'm, I am. I'm really curious to see what uh, everybody's saying. Where's your mind? Uh, and you know we're I'm talking Star Trek guys, but if it's sci-fi adjacent, that's fine too. And if, if it's uh, the shows or if it's promotion, marketing, merch adjacent, that's fine too. You know I usually don't get off on the merch because there's plenty of outlets to do that too. But whatever your little heart wants to get into, too. 
Uh, I should also say that we've got some other cool things coming also. You're going to start hearing a lot more about da -da, the, the Explore sites. It's West Coast Mission, or we we can say. The WCAM is coming to July. It's our biggest, big, big tour. This is the one that, that I do with Nation Tour Tours. That's terrible. If, if you saw at Chicago or if you saw us at Vegas, Vegas, we were together. I haven't done it since 2016. I'm excited about, about that. We're going to be talk, talking about that. And a lot of people, apparently, apparently after years of, of introducing this, apparently a lot of people are now finding ending out about location site, site tours, all the scales. That's the big day one, but you know, you know, I offer a, a custom one day day tour for you when you're in LA. So just to say that's that's headed down the pipe too. I, I'm gonna dive right in now. I do do have some parrots. I'm going to I should say we have some ratings we can get from the parrots and some some biz news that way. But uh, I'm gonna try to time myself here for about thirty minutes like normal and take a break for the parrots, and then we'll um. Oh, no, no, my audio is very, hmm, my audio is very distorted. Okay, then let's, let's see about, about that. Is that better, gang? I've really got to see, you know what? Uh, my mic traveled. And maybe it was not the best thing for my microphone. I'm curious if if, uh, if that was good. Did I lose everybody over the audio? <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> uh, is that is that an improved audio, gang? You do better there, there. Hmm. 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 Interesting. All right. All right. I'm gonna have to sit. Apparently, apparently, the month away for everything thing was not doing us well. Well, so I'm gonna have to see see what's going. We'll have to run run some tests and get the studio video back up enough. Um. Still, still bad echo. All righty. Let's try this option then. Where are we? Let Let me just go down the line. All right, kids, how about that? Is that better? How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we saying here? Uh, glad you're there, though. Nope, not using two microphones. Here, I'll even unplug this one. My good boy. Uh, much better? All right, well, we're just on the system default then. Something, I'm hoping something didn't bung up with my good microphone then. All righty. This actually happened on a Zoom business call the other day. Uh, so maybe I, I need to, that's where I need to troubleshoot. Anyway, all I was trying to say there was <laughs> maybe I should just do a restart here. Should I do that? I mean, it is episode 275, and I'm going to say, are you spoiled Star Trek? Because this is going to be a secret AMA today on Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek. Larry Nimichek coming at you here from a new improved, at least for now, Trekland HQ for some clarity, sanity, and the big picture and better audio. Here for all things Star Trek, just a quick word. Um, it is 275. I don't know. I'm thinking everybody's being pretty ho-hum these days. So, um, you know, we got Lord X is rolling out. People are enjoying the shows. The Easter egg podcasts are out there. Everybody's talking. Everybody starting a podcast or a cam show feels like Star Trek day rolled by, kind of underwhelming, but still fun to see. Vegas is in our rearview mirror. New York Comic Con's coming up. Uh, DST is coming up, whatever is left of it there in Europe. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. I just have a sense that everybody's a little fat and sassy, a little satisfied. I don't know. Will Rogers said one time, uh, you can tell uh, there ain't no civilization where there ain't no satisfaction. And I think we've got a satisfied Star Trek community. I don't know. What's, what's your burning issue today? What do you want to talk about? Because, because it's that sense, um, 
I didn't see a burning issue. Now, I've since, in the last two hours, come up with a couple of things I want to get into over the next couple of weeks that aren't necessarily time-related, but they're very topical. So I'm good for the future. But today, and because it's 275, I thought we would do an AMA. How about them apples? All righty. Let's see. Um, I've just been concentrating on getting uh, Portal wound up. The open house for Portal, which is free and open to everybody, is coming up in October. We'll have more on that lately, uh, later. And uh, had a great time on a couple of specialty tours I did, but you're going to be hearing a lot more about the West Coast Away Mission, which is the first time Terrace Geek Nation tours. Terrace and I have done the big tour since 2016. If you're interested, go to geeknationtours.com, where he has all of his tours, his niche history, military, fanish, gaming tours. Uh, this is a big one. And we're adding a celebrity quotient. There we go. There'll be even more folks than uh, those involved by the time we get there. Um, and of course, anytime you're in LA, you can do a customized tour with me under as a Trekland Trek. But that's happening. And I'm also going to have some standard, some LA away mission treks for all the folks who want to partake who are coming in for the cruise in February. So those are the LA Away Days special cruise dates the day before and the day after they set sail. And I can do some custom treks if you're going to be hanging around in LA a little longer than that. But that's all for the cruise folks Tuesday. Uh, West Coast Away Mission is for anybody that's a standalone in July. It's not tied into a con. But yeah, Terrace and I are going to be hitting the trail out there to talk about that. But today, today is all about... 275. Today's all about having adequate audio, apparently. And uh, today's all about what you all want to talk about. Uh, it's an Ask Me Anything. It's an AMA. And we'll mark 275 today and see what everybody's up to now that we are uh, up and going. And it's good to see. If you are new to our community, thank you for finding your way here. It's been a little odd the last few weeks. And look, I'm not phasing in and out. That's also bad. Um, but yeah, if you're new, make sure to introduce yourself. Tell us where you're coming from. And remember, if you are on Facebook, you're only seeing Facebook comments. But if you're on Twitch or YouTube, you're seeing all three, just to know. And you know what? If you are joining us later, you really should try to make it Tuesday afternoon sometime. 1, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. 9 p.m. UK time, 10 p.m. Central Europe. Let's see what everybody's doing. In 30 minutes, I do have some parent analytics bits to get to. Not much, but we can do that. I'll try to uh, keep that in mind when we get there. So, and if you are, please, if you are asking an actual question, I will try to answer your actual question. Those are always awesome. We always devolve into conversation streams, though. And if you're new, I will try to give you a shout out, like Subspace Chatter, I'm looking at right now. Uh, boost your Navigain, or at least I did. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'm beginning to think that maybe I've got a bad cord, or maybe my mic took a shot here and there's something loose. We'll have to see what's going on with that. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Uh, hello, Nadim. Good to see you. Eliza! Hi, girl. Yes, yes, yes. Did I mention that? I do want to mention this once again. Andy's book, Boom, From Slavery to Star Trek. This is an excerpt from her big lifelong and, and family history book that's coming this fall, I think November. But meantime, she has a few of these special editions. It's pretty substantial. Uh, she will sign it if you throw in a couple extra bucks. You can check it out, slavery to star trek, uh, dot com. Somebody, somebody might correct me in the in the uh, chat here if I'm off on something. But she still has a few copies. They will get them to you. She's back in Australia now. Uh, safe, tra safely travel. Had a couple of weeks more in LA. Incredible time at Vegas. It's all uh, most of it's online. You can go find our entire, well, she did two Trek Files with me recordings, and we had an hour panel that was pretty awesome for all the folks who were lucky enough to be up there. And I'm so glad we finally did more than had her in front of 30 people in L.A. five years ago. 
and uh, had it, we've had her as a guest twice on Portal 47. So that's been there. That's been done. <clears throat> Aha. So um, thank you for that, Eliza. Uh, Melanie, whoop, whoop. Really love last week's episode of Lower Decks. Boimler wants to be a people. <laughs> beep, beep. They thought he was a robot. I know. it's You can really tell Lower Decks, people are noticing that they're making... They're, did you see the bones of the dead Dupler in the underground? Of, they're making their own canon now. They're starting to reference their own canon as much as they are uh, the classic shows, the predecessor shows. So um, it's... <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I wasn't looking to reboot Max <laughs> Headroom, so yay, that's good. Um, but thanks, Fifty Seven Pool. It's funny, Fifty Seven Pool. Yes, I know. Thanks. Hey, Andy Tay, good to see you again. I'm trying to remember where you're coming to us from, but I'm sure you may remind us. Um, okay. Thank you, though, for the advice about audio. We did get it done. Um, oh, uh, Zaheer, Lord X is back. Yeah, they're like four shows in. <laughs> uh, hey, Cairo, yes, you are finally back from your vacation, and I'm finally back from my audio vacation, apparently. So we're both here. Okay, yeah, I was, it, was my, uh, it was my homage to Tholian Webb. I feel like the last three or four weeks may have been my homage to Tholian Web. Okay. Uh, yes, Picard season three starts February 16th. What a great delayed Valentine's Day gift. Yes. Someone noticed that that was the 47th day of 2023. Uh, and there we go. It's just a 20 minute episode so you can catch up. Yes, that's true too. Um, hmm. You are having trouble streaming shows on all your streaming devices, a conflict with the Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, yes. I will do that. Well, I had to go to Chrome because Firefox and Restream had issues. <clears throat> All righty. Hmm. Uh, Stephanie, hi. Are you new to us here on Tuesdays? Can't wait to see me next year at a certain convention. Let me know where where you are, and uh, and I probably knew. And you can remind me. It's been an interesting month, right? Anyway, so yay, we've got our audio fix. Good to hear. Thank you for the feedback, everybody. Um. Hi, May. Thank you. I'm glad it, the audio is better. But um, hello. And is this your first time with us? Thank you for joining in. And again, everybody, this is really supposed to be an AMA, <clears throat> you know, with actual questions. So yay, yay for uh, audio fixing. Okay. <laughs> Let me let me thank you, Christoph. Let me uh, let me do a diagnostic first and see. It might be the cable. That's a thing. Uh, hey, Alan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for being uh, a Patreon folk, by the way. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, the Trek crew, Stephanie Roan. Well, um, stay tuned. Hopefully, within the next year or two, I'll be on the cruise. But for everybody who's in town Los Angeles this year from departing from L.A., again, the site is up. It's modernized, and I apologize to those who went and were confused. It's now set up for both the day of and the day, the day before and the day after embarkation. <laughs> More power. More power to the microphone compensators. Yes. All right. Uh, Admiral, there be audio here. Yes. Okay. Oh, Nadim, it's sad to say that, but I know that's just kind of the mood I hear from everybody. DST, someone put it out as its misery. Well, I had two DSTs. 
um, on the England side, never made it to a German. I bet it's quite about as cattle callish as uh, it it seemed like. Uh, let's see. Hey, Christoph. DST is making progress, actually sending emails about details, automatic refund for prices, reduction of the now smaller Voyager group photo, useful online schedule. The Voyager reunion talk is sold out, but you don't think there'll be another one. Too much bad history. Yeah, it might be even more than uh, bad history. <laughs> hey, David, my man, good to see you. Cannot stay at all due to work, but you want to pop it and say hi. Well, always. Finally ended up with the Tuesday work from home day, but now you have to be all on long Zooms for work. Ah, ha, ha. You didn't think it was going to happen that way. Anyway, glad you could pop in and out of your long, long business Zooms. Um, hey, girl. Hi. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Yes. <laughs> it's exactly. I just cross-circuited from A to B. Uh, yeah, it's a Trek thing. It was a Trek thing. I just uh, rerouted power to the main deflector. Wasn't that not hysterical, though? Uh, that I, I was. I still have not gone to check what the uh, tech of the tech was. Of um, yes, yes, yes. You're working so late that you finally got to hop on a live call instead of catching up passwords for once. Well, good. Yay. I'm going to say define late unless it's your own unique work shift, but there you go. Oh, <laughs> John, you caught up with the last two Trek files and you think Leonard Majlish was the most hated man in Hollywood. Well, at least in Star Trek, if you didn't have to orbit Gene Roddenberry, who had to deal with Leonard Majlish? Apparently so. And apparently his... I'm still trying to find a picture of him, a photograph. Uh, apparently his offspring, he has a son maybe that's, I think I saw something. I mean, I would love to, you know, have a, have a contrite, have a pleasant conversation about their dad, if we can ever do that. Uh, but there, apparently he, he has um, surviving kids out there somewhere. Uh, and I totally agree also. Yes, Cairo. Andy is amazing, and it was awesome to see him here in Vegas. And I hope everybody can get her books and check out all the video that we've got online from if she's there. Yeah, she was great and amazing. I'm going to go up a notch on there. Hey, Frank, you had some time the other day, so you actually went back and watched Pilgrims of Eternity. And, oh, my God, that seemed like a lifetime ago again. Well, it'll be 10 years. We shot it in January 2013. So episode one of Continues will be 10 years old. The shoot was 10 years old in just a few months, in six months. Four months. <laughs> and then now we're on the countdown to the premiere. Yeah. You can understand me being a little mixed here about wanting to celebrate. I will always treasure the work that we did and, and the people there. I'm... You can understand me being a little bit uh, mixed now about just gloriously celebrating it 24-7. Of course, I wanted to reshoot the first one anyway when I wasn't dead tired and I had a little bit of prep time. But thank you. Thank you for the kind words. A lot of people put a lot of work in on that series. Um, Scott, one of the great gene mysteries to you, how he couldn't see it and why he was actively okay with it for so long. Well, it's like good cop, bad cops. It's like he was his protector and he, Leonard helped him. Leonard was there in the 70s when Gene got to, you know, was dethroned and then got it back in the 80s. And he just, when you get somebody you feel like is in your corner, you may not know about all the stuff on the side. And if you hear about, you know, friction, if you hear about rough spots, Leonard Majlish was not only a notorious negotiator and, and a, you know, a real pit bull for his boss. And I mean that in a good way. I shouldn't say that. Um, number one will come for me. Um, he'll lick me to death. 
uh, but no, he not only that, but he interfered. It wasn't just about being a lawyer with legal issues and negotiations. He actively tried to protect Gene from his co colleagues, from his coworkers, from his employees. And when Next Generation came, yeah, he was, he was, you know, he was an ankle biter all the years of the movie comeback time. But when you got to series with Next Gen and and Gene's declining health, and especially after the first year or two, he was just he's the chaos in Chaos on the Bridge. And it finally was banned from the lot by the Writers Guild from the writers complaining that he was a lawyer. And why is he why is he messing around with scripts, much less going into people's offices and messing with their stuff? And why is he submitting revised script versions and change pages when it's not what the writer submitted? When the higher up producers are getting pages from writers after he'd made changes, there was a lot of stuff screwed, but he was doing it all so that there would be... Stop me if you've heard of this before. It's the theory that if you keep everything in chaos, the one person in charge, if they have their faults, if they have deficiencies, or if they're just paranoid, nothing will ever happen to them because everybody else is too busy with the crisis of the chaos of the moment that's close to them. Um, it's almost, it's like born out of paranoia when there's no need for it. But I think some of that was Gene's advancing age and the micro strokes he was having that we do now know about. So um, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, for posting it there. Oh, that's the YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. And I think we post it too. Paramount Plus started in Italy. Yes, there's some European news. The GSA. Not the General Services Administration, but Germany, Switzerland, Austria. Any guess how long it'll take Lower Decks to stay on Amazon Prime outside the whole series, maybe? Good question. You know, the overhead on Lower Decks is so much smaller. The time of the episodes, but also like the human factor. There's a million people working in animation, apparently. <clears throat> but it's still not the same, and there's not as much money flowing. Sadly, the channels, the unions and guilds, and the way animation is produced is a step below the way live action is produced. You know, you, you see that happening. The writers aren't even all unionized. I mean, there there's no guarantees. And a lot of people get less than for doing, you know, same kind of work. Animation is still thought of as a lesser, a lesser entity. And there are people right now fighting to get, starting with the writing, you know, a half hour to half hour, getting the compensation up where it is and not a stepchild. So maybe because of that, there's not the push to have everything on Paramount Plus at the risk of some of the foreign, you know, that that gap where some nations are left, some countries, some markets are left without it while they, the way that happened in Europe with the Discovery being removed when it was about to debut to, to be debuting on Paramount Plus. I'm thinking that's a different vibe going on. I could be totally wrong. Let's hope. Let's hope there's nothing... Um, you know, sudden. Let's not hope there's nothing jerky that people aren't ripped away from mid-season lower decks when something comes along and that there'll be more of a coverage issue. And of course, you've got the Nickelodeon side too is is lower decks turning up on... I mean, I'm sorry, that's... Yeah, that's um, Prodigy. But let's see if it can maintain a global Nickelodeon presence too. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> uh, come on, slide. Oh, you're hoping to get some trailers at NYCC and some promos? Paying for the streams. Oh, New York Comic Con has a ticket to pay for live stream. Is that what it is? There we go. I totally get you. It's <clears throat> Comic Cons on the East Coast, or at least New York Comic Con, is such a different critter than the uh, West Coast ones. And I know Reed Pop owns New York Comic Con. So they have an, it's not an official licensed Star Trek thing, but it's for the New York hub now, still, 
uh, that's entrenched. We'll see what the remerger with Paramount does on the TV side. But we'll see. Did you know, for instance, that the TV shows have one fulfillment place for their DVDs and the movies still have a different one and they have not merged? <laughs> So if you're trying to do reviews and giveaways, you have to deal with two different entities. Uh, it's true. It's true. The minutia of the biz world. But it's it's one more reflection about how the CBS divorcee and the Paramount movie divorcee have still not fully reintegrated. Yeah. They may have remarried officially on paper and filed at the courthouse. But there's a lot of iterations that still have not uh, come down to pass. Um, okay, all you workers bopping in, I'm glad to see you. Good to see you, Glenn. It was good to see you and your mom again at Vegas, too. Uh, there you go, October 8th. Talking about New York Comic Con, right? You were in email hell. It's okay, Linda. I was in weird audio hell for a moment, but we're all here. Yay. How long will CBS Paramount let season three Picard soak in the floodlights, and how soon will they announce whatever show will follow in its slot? I know. I think that's... I was expecting that for Star Trek Day, but I don't know if it will come out even at New York Comic Con. And if not then, it'll just be a random press release. Yeah. If they announce a new show, when will it overlap the hoo-ha about what there is to roll out? I know. I know. Picard next spring. And then you've got Strange and Discovery. And poor Discovery. It's... It's going to be the oldest brother, but the uh, the least followed sibling, the way things are going. Of course, things can change. And I hear good things about the fifth season. Uh, wow! Hi, Tumor Boy. You're coming in on Twitch. <laughs> uh, is it lonely over there? But thank you for doing that. Uh, yeah, Linda, you missed the other show that will now remain uh, historically nameless. Uh, yes, yes, it is great to see Tumor Boy here. Yay. Uh, Linda, no, you're not, apparently. <laughs> okay. An actual question from John. What is my favorite Gene Roddenberry pilot from the 70s? Oh, you just saw, my, yes, Mike Farrell celebrating the 50th anniversary of MASH. Although, of course, he wasn't there until five five seasons in, six seasons in. Um, yeah, oh, that's, that's wild. 50 years of MASH. And to realize that MASH, Mary Tyler Moore... What else was it? There, the, the yeah, the early kids. I'm telling you, the early '70s. We just, we just had. There was crap, but the good stuff was so good, and it still holds up. I mean, uh, Mash, Mary Tyler Moore, Bob Newhart was the one that premiered because Mary Tyler Moore was '70, and then All in the Family was '71, and then Mash was '72 along with Bob Newhart. But oh my God, what good, what great shows! And you, uh, and they had a little bite to them too. Mm. I was just watching the pilot to Bob Newhart the other day. And one of my favorite episodes. It's things that'll things that still make me laugh. Uh, uh, my favorite Gene Roddenberry pilot from the 70s. You know, I'm gonna admit something here. As much as I've seen clips, I've never watched any of the PAX movies all the way through. I should. And I've never watched I've never watched uh, uh, the. All I can say is Spencer Fryer. I've never well, yeah, I've never watched any of his pilots. I was even going to say Pretty Maids all in a row. I think I watched years ago, but it may have been butchered up. Yeah, I never saw Spectre. I never saw Quester. Uh, yeah, and it was weird they had those revolt probe. 
was a show that they were quasi they they just did the merchandise for it at lincoln enterprise i never could figure out why they were doing that but now i know it was just a business they were trying to grow lincoln way ahead of the curve as a fun stuff for fans you know sell the scripts sell the doodads mm. so i don't have a favorite trek pilot from the 70s unless it's the motion picture <laughs> uh let's see there you go thank you scott the live video version of andy's truck files episode yes if you didn't know this we had video since we did our season nine premiere with andy the amazing andy richardson kindred andrea her full name but we had andy doing two uh truck files with us live we got squeezed off a stage the way lots of things happened at Bally's. But we did it live at my table with John in there doing the voiceover and, and Jessica coming over, Jessica Lynn Verdi coming in to do the Femme Fatale opening live. It was awesome. And it's all on video. You can check it out there. Thank you, Scott, for bringing that up. Something a little different. It's a show, but we're doing it live and with all that entails, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, oh, you watch it once a year. I mean, you know, it's going to be 70s-ish. But uh, you can clearly see where data came from. But you have that. You have the buddy. They had a big fight. If they had gone to series with it, and the apes won, you know, the Planet of the Apes series, which didn't last a year, is what CBS took instead of the Quester tapes. But had it gone to series, Quester wanted to get rid, speaking of Mike Farrell, they wanted to get rid of Jerry Robinson's character. Of the Jerry Robinson kid. They just wanted Quester to be all alone, like it was run for your life or something. I mean, even the fugitive, even the fugitive had his detective. Um, exactly. The good thing about Quester was he went that way. Now, what's sad is Herb Wright, if you know your credits, worked the first season and then he came back and worked fourth or fifth season on Next Generation as a staff writer and has his name on some scripts. He was going to come back in the mid early after Gene passed. He was going to get, he wanted to get uh, Quester and reboot it again and, and take another pass at it. And of course, Majel, this is in the era of earth, final conflict, et cetera, et cetera, Andromeda. And Major was totally happy to take a Gene Roddenberry property out of the files and have someone take it and run with it. And they knew Herb. And in the middle of developing it, he just, died very suddenly i don't know if it's a heart attack i don't know what the cause was but i just remember it was kind of the shock and so the project also died right there and every once in a while i hear some talk about maybe someone wants to take the concept and update it and reboot it my goodness you could cast that any way you want looking at you stupid hollywood controversies uh <clears throat> Gene's mental health. Hey, Scott. Gene's mental health state explains the T and G are amazelish. But if you're not mistaken, Gene's was friend with him for years before that. Yeah, and a client. At least since the, we've come across papers, at least since the mid late 60s, I think. I think. Do we actually know of specific story changes that made it into episodes from Maislish? Uh, that's a good question. It would be like line, you know, a line here, a line there. I'm not talking about big story scope because those would be obvious, you know, but, um, that's a good question. There's a lot of allegation. Some of these papers might be in UCLA. They might not be in the files here. And you only have people obliquely talking about it without like actual, because it's hard to track. It's hard to track unless you were a writer or you were an assistant and you were there in the room. And as the, you know, the color change pages get melded into just a white copy at the end, even if there's individual dates, after a while, you don't remember unless you kind of memorialize it for yourself or your colleague does or your assistant does. But unless you, it was a big thing in the moment and it helps if it was a big episode. Like, I, you know, it helped in the day to talk to everybody at the end. But even at the end of the season, 
only the two or three big moments of the year are going to come back in your memory. You can kind of go back and let's wade through, you know, if you wrote in the old 26 episode series days, if you, um, if you had five or six scripts out of the 26 or four or five and you wallow in the detail again. And if, if I'm sitting there and we're, we're, we were going back, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, three months ago, and you, you might rem start remembering bits of what you, what your own process was and what the room did and what you got in a fight with your showrunner, what you got in a fight with Rick or Michael or Jerry, you know, uh, the early people, what you got in a fight with each other when it was the chaos and they did everything by, <laughs> they didn't do everything by conference and notes. They did everything by just, they circulated memos around and everybody talked to each other it was like it was a living email chain, something ridiculous. Um, yeah. It's hard enough when you're zooming along with a well-oiled machine to remember what you individually did much less, um, you know, and a lot of the uh, aggrieved writers from those days are long gone. The people who would come up and say, Oh, I can point right here and let you know. Well, they're, they're kind of gone. Maybe David still could, but look what happened to David. And I, when we have a paper trail for blood and fire or blood and ice, and uh, I don't know how much of it was Leonard getting involved without just the general craziness already that was inherent in David Gerald's unproduced script. Um, hey, John, when's my interview with Terry Metalis happening? Hint. <laughs> I Here's the thing. I don't want to talk to Terry until Picard is out. I hate, I, you know, it's a, there's a whole industry of everybody doing their cute, coy interviews. But either I get the script so I can read and then we can talk about it. But I don't want to, and I don't even want to do a one season, two season because he helped set up the third, the second season of Picard and then left to go work on third. So they could, when they basically were going to shoot back to back and not have a hiatus for anybody, including the writers. So he had to get third season whipped up. And that was more his heart and soul and his baby. Although he was there to set up the bones and the framework for season two with Akiva. So did I miss something there about the hint? <laughs> I'm going to talk to him as soon as we can, but I don't want to, I don't want to push. I don't want to waste the effort and the time. I don't want to pussyfoot around. And Terry, knowing all the years he sat in Brandon's outer office, when I would go in and do that with Brandon at the end of the years, uh, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So, um hi and marie yes you there in the front row with your four hands up uh hey eliza uh what are you seeing here you heard the star trek movies are being taken off paramount plus any insight whether that's true or they might be available the basic line i keep hearing is that it was contracts prior to the remerger and the launch and the evolution of of cbs all access into paramount plus so I know it's very annoying. I need to go hunt down where um, I was telling people where the 4K TMP is because it's it's it was there and now it's gone, right? I've been a little distracted, gang, the last few weeks, and I've got more distractions to come. I'm trying to keep my, my <laughs> and good for good reasons, for good reasons, not just not just health. Work things are happening, so we've got to we've got to get there and go there. Uh, but that's basically what I think it is. It's just contracts because I don't think it's, I don't think Paramount Plus enjoys having the movies as they get their sensibility, the people running things as Paramount Plus transforms from the old CBS Alexa as the movie and the TV sides integrate still, because it's going to take a year or two. We've, we're only what a year into this process. It's really going to take some of these undiscovered corners and countries of the process from start to finish everything ancillary um and that's a good that's a good um you know who's the mindset how long does it take you to clean out a department in your a department and make it yours when you're hired into the boss you know that um what is this oh, wait 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 he was his protector 
Exactly. Yes. And was used to make his dollars that he got. He owed a lot to the guy who finally got him paid for Trek. That's exactly it. And you overlook a lot of the rough stuff. Oh, there's always going to be conflict and negotiation. But no, it was the unethical crap that Majlish did. The really, really shitty stuff that the Writers Guild, you know, was able to easily, easily adjudicate. It was just sad that David and Dorothy and some of the other staff and part of the reason for the turnover got sucked into that madness. Uh, Frank, am I familiar with an app on Roku called Martian Poop? <laughs> it's really great. It brings all of the fan-made Star Trek series together in one location. Martian Poop. Is it just Star Trek uh, fan films? Or is it like fan films in general? Uh, I'll have to see. I'll have to check that out. So to answer your question, no, I'm not familiar with it. <clears throat> um, hey, John. Nothing to add other than hello to all your beautiful nerds. And John, I owe you some, speaking of uh, distractions, I owe you some uh, email. But glad you could bop in today, everybody. Star Trek Unlimited. Um, who are you calling a nerd? <laughs> I think everybody. Yep. Wow, this has been a, thank you. I've, has everybody been a little hungry here to get back to things? Mm. Four active people actively talking on Twitch feels like a record. It could be, but I'm sure I'll get my little Twitch email that tells me I had 3.7 people on Twitch or whatever. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Oh my God! The last season episode where he had the the so he had the group the the therapy group for inmates about to go back outside, and the one guy did not want to. He was terrified of going back, and he he came to rob Bob at his house, but he faked it. He just wanted to be thrown back in prison. He was nervous about living on the outside, but oh my God, when he had him up against the wall and Howard comes running in and runs over and you think, yay, Howard's Howard's going to get him out of this, but he runs over to the wall and throws himself up against the wall and, and it's hysterical. And then they realize what's going on and Bob talks him down and then Howard keeps turning and saying, will you guys shut up? This wall's about to go. Oh my God. That was the, the first time I saw that it was hysterical. Uh, the, the absurdist. You can talk about it being, you know, black humor, grim humor, dry, droll, but the absurdism oh, at times they would go off the rails on Bob Newhart. And no, it was not Mary Tyler Moore light. <clears throat> okay. End of my rant. End of my rant. It's like my rant for Green Acres. Someday I'm going to have the minority shows you never talk about anymore that deserve to be talked about. Uh, the shows that really affected me are still over all the years. And Northern Exposure would be there too. Are they hard to... I thought they were actually getting, getting easier to find out there. I know there are dealers that are selling... Video dealers that are selling uh, tapes of things, including Spectre, I thought. <laughs> hey, Dylan. Uh, no. Uh, I'm here because I'm supporting Janet. And we're trying not to <laughs> wear out all our friends. So, no. No, I'm not. It's the first time I've missed Salt Lake <clears throat> in, what, five, six years? Since the 50th. 2016 was the first year I've been, I was in Salt Lake. And aside from the pandemic cancellations. This is my first time to miss since 2016. So I'm a little bummed, but we'll be there next year. They've already, everybody's good. They want me back next year when we're free and clear to navigate. So <clears throat> yay. So I'll miss you. Tell, I'm going to do a shout out this weekend to everybody in Salt Lake about not being there. But there are a few more Trek folks, I think, at least this year. <clears throat> Yes, Cairo. I think if we're back at the Rio, the stage schedules will feel like a real day. Yeah. 
It is a shame that so much happened to Gene by that point that it blinded him to all things majorly. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, oh, yes. Gene, we have the... Gene thought that they had a series order for at least 13 episodes, and then it, it went away. It went away. CBS wound up... They thought they only had room for one genre show. Ha, 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 compared to today. Uh, and it was like they the, they made a choice between Apes, the series, or Quester. And they went with it. Think how much cheaper. I mean, part of the reason they canceled Apes was because of the makeup cost of the Apes. Um, think how much cheaper Quester would have been. You had a few Android effects on one guy. Yeah. Silly, silly CBS. And there's CBS trying not to be the rural comedy show, the cornball show. <clears throat> Wait, he found a... Hi, William. Well, good deal. Hope it was in good shape. Good production. Uh, hello, Glinda, to you too. Yay. Yeah, I think here in the last year or two, they were making talks about it, but it hasn't happened. Oh, it is? Okay. I just knew it went away. It came, and then it went away. But if it's back, that's good. <clears throat> There's only one place Director's Edition 4K is your table. There you go. Um, uh, let's see, 57. Would it be too expensive for Roddenberry to buy the rights of everything and have a Trek channel to consolidate the animal property? In a word, yes. He couldn't scrape up the, what was it, half a million to do it in 1969 for about five minutes before they realized what they had. Uh, and you're still, you're sure not going to do it today. Are you talking about just those pilots? Just to get the unsold pilots? Or the un, the un, the unbought pilots? <clears throat> I know, I know. Bob Newhart is so... Is, oh, my God. Okay, see, when you think Green Acres, everybody goes into the theme song, but oh, my God. Okay, I'm not going to get off on that rant. There is so much more to Green Acres besides the theme song, but everybody's entitled to say, I, I love it when you can go right ahead and sing. Absolutely. I mean, land spreading out so far and wide. You missed the MASH commentary. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Dylan. That's that's nice of you to say. Thank you so much. And this year, who knows? The print shop in the convention center might actually be open. These Those ghost cons, the first cons back after reopening, that was Vegas and then Salt Lake was an interesting weekend and for both of them the print shops were closed it just drove me crazy uh drove us crazy uh hey halbjorn i bet you will have no problems catching up we had a little bit of a slow start going and oh adrian it's good to see your avatar face too love you too Wow, it's we've got a good. I should I should do two weeks on the road and skip a week all the time. <clears throat> yeah, reviving Quester or other things on P Plus is hopefully a different topic than it was years ago for CBS. That's true. That's true. Uh, and I know the interest is certainly there on you know Rod and Trevor's side, obviously. Um, yeah, Paramount's not going to let it go until the copyright law makes. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about consolidation. No, no. <laughs> you love Arnold. <laughs> well, you remember, you remember, Mr. Douglas? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Fred Ziffel. Fred Ziffel. Fred Ziffel. Oh, my God. The absurdism of the show is hysterical. YouTube has a series called Tales with the Twist with Bill Shatner. Is it all about tornadoes? No. Okay, apparently not. 
Uh, thank you for interrupting the chatter. I'm going to do that right now, Christoph. Thank you. Yeah, it's been about 45 minutes. <clears throat> Uh, John, I'm fine. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Maybe we have uh, an extra light on or You know what? I th Oh, I see. Some of my shielding here has come down. So, no, I, um, I think I'm fine. But let me entertain you. Let me check out the parrots. Here's the thing, gang. I went to look, and uh, <clears throat> now I missed them. We skipped last week. We didn't do anything. And last week, maybe they're only posting these every two weeks. So the regular Parrot Analytics, which is this company's 12 years in or so, to, um, to trying to get a handle on measuring popularities of series in the streaming era when the, the old school Nielsen method of measuring uh audiences so ad rates could be set for commercials which also gave you a metric of popularity that's kind of moot now or at least it's diminished because yeah there's still network shows with commercials but streaming is three four if you watch the emmys and who did uh you get it that you know when you talk about abbott elementary being a throwback to a network sitcom being an emmy consideration when nothing else on drama and emmys and specials ever is <clears throat> well then there you go the, i mean that what what's the heaviest network uh consideration well it was like comedy variety but now john oliver's taken home all the emmys so there you go leaving um the late night shows and and some of the other ones who aren't strictly streaming in the dust but that's what that's what the parrots do they're measuring and they do it in tons of countries around the world the u.s every week is posted the top 10 <clears throat> this week on the digital only as a factor of an average show, because there's five, six, seven hundred series now available to watch if you want to try. Stranger Things is number one. Uh, as of a week ago, this is ending uh, September 9th, so it's a week behind. There's nothing newer posted. Stranger Things, 82 times the popularity of the average show that they so Then Cobra Kai, She Hulk, Lord of the Rings. Rings of Power, I should say. Mandalorian, Orville, Only Murders in the Building, which we finally got to start watching. The Boys, The Witcher, and Titans is the top 10. Ending up at Titans with 26.9, so 27 times the popularity of the average show they measure. So remember that, 27 times for the digitals. Overalls, um, there's only one digital Stranger Things in the top 10. Otherwise, that's Game of Thrones at 110 Oh my God, are people never going to stop talking about Game of Thrones? Because this is measuring, Parrot measures everything available online to measure. from the, the posts, the tweets, the retweets, the videos, the memes, the mashups, the commentary, the arguments, the critics, the answers to critics, the promotional stuff. You know, it's all fans. Game of Thrones won 10 times. I, I don't, okay. You know, they lived in caves and fought with swords and died. Except for one out of one out of fifty people lived to be fifty. Okay. SpongeBob's number three, then Rick and Morty, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, House the Dragon, Saturday Night Live, Sesame Street, and One Piece. P I E C E. Um. So we're yes, no Star Trek in the top ten, no live actions, and fairly or unfairly, the animateds never have never made it into the top ten. But where are they? Remember what I said. Uh, 27 for the top 10. Lower Decks, which is fresh episodes, but it's animation. Um, it's climbed from its off-season. Its hiatus figure was about 11 or 12 times the popular of average show, The Factor. The, um, yeah, 15 times different. It's 15.7. So it's higher it's gone up. If you look at its trend line, it's 16% higher than it was. Its trend line on the 60-day trend since the middle of August, week to week, has been climbing, basically since the premiere. That's good, but it's still sitting um, for the 30-day average of 15.7, and it's above that, and it'll probably keep climbing. Picard, in its off-season, with the chatter about third season, 
and not just the Stargazer, but the Titan A and all that. Picard in its off season is sitting at 18.2 over the last 30 days. So its trend is two points higher than lower decks. And it's not even a, and it's, it's down slightly. It's, it's gap is down a little bit. Um, Discovery itself. And I haven't looked at Discovery in a long time. Is it 13.7? So, and again, that's a 30 day. So Discovery is a point. Is uh, two points, actually. Discovery is like two points below lower decks now. So that's it. We're going to we're going to talk about that some week. We're going to talk about the phenomenon of uh, discovery and strange new is at 19.5 in its off season. And it's, you know, down it's trending down a little bit because it's not hot fresh shows, 13% down, but they're all still having said all of that, they're all still discovery is still in the 98th percentile of all drama shows. It's in the draw. They lump it in with drama. They lump Strange New and Picard, though, in with uh, science fiction. Um, I think, right? Action adventure, <laughs> action adventure, sci-fi or not. So, so um, yeah, the parrots are kind of there. Lower decks is is up a few points because people are talking. But again, as I said, at the top to show are is. Is there just a very contented, satisfied feeling right now? Is this like the end of the summer, early fall? I don't know. Back to school and football distraction time? You you tell me. You tell me. Maybe we should stop talking about Green Acres and get back <laughs> to Star Trek. <clears throat> but thank you, Christoph, for the interruption. Uh, you go right on quoting regulations, Lieutenant. Couple a dozen actors who were on both MASH and Star Trek. You're working on a list. Yes, David Ogden Steers comes to mind. Is it Steyers? I always said Steers, and I may have been wrong for years. <clears throat> yes, yes. Um, let's see. Hey, yes, May. I always say if you're on Facebook, you don't see the Twitch or the YouTube people. But if you're on Twitch or YouTube, you do see everybody's. So that's a that is a fact. The majority of people are on Facebook, but you are losing the Twitchers and the YouTubers, right? <clears throat> yes, yes, he has. Yeah, you know, that could have been a topic this week. What the hell is this Enterprise is landing, the Starship is landing? That's so, to me, that totally sounds like a committee thing. <laughs> Somebody in New York, new to the franchise, thought that would be just an awesome, awesome merch line to do. And the fandom is going, is this, is this a secret new series? Is this the clue to the post-Picard slot show? which is actually what I thought for about a day or two. And then I'm like, no, this is some some baby marketer somewhere in the cosmos of Paramount Global thought it would be a hot idea to do all this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only one that would have fit was the Voyager's landing. Yes, yes, Cairo. And that's just the beginning. And it's also the total symptomatic wackiness of the whole thing. <clears throat> overalls or what <laughs> very good very good raise your hand <laughs> if you never wanted to watch an episode of game of thrones okay i can add that to my show of hands polls at the beginning um yes of course as john con on his private texting just reminded me and I this was in a this was in a thread somewhere, and I think I made the point. Most of the at least the O1, the A, and the D can land. Great trick, Daffy, but I can only do it once. Yeah. Or without a space dock. Absolutely. <clears throat> um 
it would be cool to do that. Yes, it would. Um, yes, Rod and Trevor would think it was very cool. <laughs> and their heirs. Uh, yeah, well, you can always reboot Andromeda. And you can always reboot, um, you know, Assignment Earth. And two or three of the other... Pro get, go back and get some of the 50s, 60s. What was it? Project APO, APO 117. You know. Uh, hello, Maria. My goodness. Good to see you again. Uh, Maria, I embarrassed and thrilled at Vegas. She was at the Newbies and Single Travelers uh, meetup party right before the landing party on, on Con Eve on Wednesday night. And we did our little, I did my bit with them. I came in and did some trivia and they had prizes. Um, Stephanie running the thing there, Jesse and, and Marina. And um, she said, hi, this is so exciting. And I'm from Brazil and it's my first time. And I said, I looked around, I said, hold on. And I kind of yell, introduced her to the 50 people standing there. And, and she enjoyed it. Slightly embarrassed, but enjoyed it. So, uh, Maria, it's good to see you. Yay. And glad you found your your way here to us on Tuesday. Mm. Restream has stopped cross-feeding the comments to and from YouTube midstream. You mean the YouTubes were there and then they went back and forth. Okay, sorry about that, gang. Uh, hello, Brian. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> I'm not even going to add to the poor Troy misinformation campaign there. <clears throat> and that's true. It is the original series one there. Hmm. Okay, so only YouTube's lost its connection. We will see. Hey, Narda, hope everything is well in the outback there. We're on all the continents. We've got Brazil. We've got Australia. We've got Europe, of course. Uh, now we just need to get, uh, what, Asia? Somewhere in across Asia. Am I leaving someone out? Occasionally, I've had people from India. Well, good. Yay. There you go. Maybe intermittent. You can't blame my microphone for that. <clears throat> Not on YouTube, weirdo. <laughs> uh, oh, of course, Sally Kellerman. Well, okay. See, I was thinking series, but yes, obviously, Sally Kellerman. thinking there's at least one other person. Well, Phrase, you have a lot of strong opinions about the Starship is Landing program, of course. Why, what might those opinions be? Do tell. We're all one happy, big happy fleet here. Yes. <clears throat> the Starship is Landing. <laughs> Sounds about as Star Trek as Don't Call Me Shirley. Uh, yeah. You were shocked. Hi, Aries. You were shocked that Star Trek guy was still alive. They thought they practiced karma. What? Am I, uh, am I, what? Okay. Let's see, what do we have here? <laughs> he can, what do you mean? He can design a land. What do you, what, 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 what? <clears throat> there you go. We got the club going. Uh, Africa? Okay. Did I confuse you with somebody? You mean you're in Africa? Yay. Where where from? My gosh, I this whole time I thought you were someone else. 
but that's what we get. Um, yes, we've got our marinas coming over. Okay. Uh, this is true. Rene Aubergenois was the original chaplain in the movie that they originally sang Suicide is Painless to. Oh. Well, we need to help that out a little bit. Small South Africa group on Facebook. There you go. Paramount Plus has joined a Walmart. <laughs> Would you believe I thought saw that? And I thought it said Walnut Plus. I'm like, what is Walnut Plus? Yeah, it's in the Walmart Plus package. I'm never going to buy anything from Walmart if I can help it. Okay. Um... Richard Linebeck was on two episodes of both. You know, I actually think I remember unearthing that years ago. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> oh, hi, Rose. We've had a global chat pack, live chat, top chat on. We are still worldwide chat back, live chat, top chat. Okay, Rose, now you've got me confused there. With the top chat, da -da 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 -da. Um, this is true. John Anderson was the general who died and then he was the Dowd. Yes. Hmm. Good point, Stingray. I, apparently we do. Apparently we do. They just laid the keel. I missed this the, for the new Enterprise. Yeah, what's up with that? What's up with that? Hmm. Uh, Cairo, I will be, as always, interested to hear what happens at DST. If it if there's follow-through or what. That's what I would... Okay, 57. That's what I thought, Jr. But I was like, wait, have I got this wrong? Mm. Well, you put Africa. Do we know anybody in Africa? So, I mean, I mean, right now, watching this, I know there's people in Africa watching Star Trek. It's, a, it's probably the slimmest continent of all, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Yay, the end of the chat. This is going to be interesting as we cut this one up. It won't be typical. The uh, number of... Mm -hmm. Well, it was barely there to begin with ever since the, the divorce to begin with. Mm -hmm. Except that the starship is landing didn't sound like it was somebody who pitched something. It sounds like it was somebody... More like it's marketing than a, but I guess it is a licensee. But there you go. <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it happens. It's a cycle. It's a pendulum swing. It explains a few other things I've talked about. Mm -hmm. I think, gang, that means on this and that, I think we're at the end of the chat. Yay. Listen, thanks for joining me for episode 275 today of Trekline Tuesdays Live, the Squishy Pillow Edition. Hey, this is this is from T Public. You know, you can't get this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining me on 275 today. Uh, a T Public product there. Just like everything else. Want to thank everybody for being here. Did I thank our Patreons yet? Here we go. Boom. Thank you for joining us on our Patreons. Day Diana Hopkin, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, and Marie Siegel. Keith Rombach, Justin Porteous, Blaze K, Nathaniel Robinson, Andrew Brzezinski, Drzezinski, I should say, and Pranakasha Productions. And then our live wires, Rusty Harold, Halpern Gun Johnson, Rob McLean, Alan Hohensi, J.R. Poole, who is not in Africa this week, Byron Bailey, Dave Gregory, Gay Clevin Lundstrom, and Casey Shafsky. Thank you all. You can do the Patreon too. It's patreon.com slash Tuesdays Live. Go over, I have a 5 and a $10 level. Very simple. Comes out at the end of the month. We're a couple of weeks away, I guess. Appreciate all of that. 
uh, your support will be helpful and handy as we not only, um, yeah, expand the archived video section, but hopefully figure out what's up with my <laughs> with my good mic is not my good mic any longer. And a few other things we're doing here online on stream. I do want to mention, if, before I forget, that the Trek Files, more tea public, uh, computer bag. Isn't that cool? The Trek Files, though, is a Roddenberry podcast. It's up every Tuesday. We're back in season nine. Our new episode is up with returning guest uh, Sandy Freeze, who is a second season. Speaking of, we were talking, speaking of Leonard Majlish, I believe Leonard comes up a time or two <laughs> in this discussion. Anyway, The Trek Files is back. Andy, we, this is our third or fourth episode for the year. Third. You want to jump in with us? It's right there at podcast.roddenberry.com. That's where the show is on Facebook with our documents of the week. You can get the audio anywhere you catch fine podcasting anywhere. That's there. I'm around on the socials if you want to catch me. Uh, Larry Nimichek on Twitter, Larry Nimichek's Trekland as you are, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, all the YouTube stuff. We're trying to grow the YouTube channel as fast as you can. And you want to come to LarryNimichek.com to get caught up on everything I'm doing, including the upside down, right side up, Geek Nation Tours, West Coast Away Mission. Yeah, Armin, uh, Tim, uh, Bobby Clark, of course. And Mike Westmore are just the first round of guests. We're going to be announcing more from now through the uh, end of the year, first of the year, as people's schedules come down and we can see who we can have with us. So check it out. It's a big one. It's a big one. We haven't done it in 2016. You want to start saving your pennies now. Or, or both. Take a custom trek with me. Come to LA. Uh, check out treklinetrex.com. Or again, come to LarryNimichek.com. Check all that out and see what's going on. Uh, cool. I'm just glad to go back and do... This is a T Public pillow, several sizes. There's a lot of cool stuff at T Public besides just the drinks and the T-shirts and the goo googies. So everybody, hey, thanks for being on with us today. Thanks for uh, continually supporting everything I do and we do. And um, gonna going to survive... Unless we have, you know what, it's, what am I saying? I'm thrilled that we don't have the crisis of the week and the controversy of the week, whether it's earned or whether it's people just have learned to be a little smarter and savvier, uh, lose their itchy trigger finger for that complaint rod. Oh, whatever gets them on Twitter. Maybe we've, we are calming down and maybe this is the strange new world of the future, the brave new world of the future where we just have Star Trek and enjoy it and nothing is too controversial. What a concept. Oh, no, no. We'll have a new show. We'll have a new season and a new show series eventually. So um, we won't we won't get too diluted, but it feels funny. It feels weird. And uh, I'm going to have to get off my but and find some new angles. I've already got a couple things I'm excited to, to bring up the next couple of weeks. Meanwhile, we'll keep an eye on what's going on on the screen. We'll, we'll catch what's up with those lower deckers and all their little self-referential Easter eggs they think they're going to bust out with. So between now and then, um, we'll see you next week. Have some things coming up that we'll be announcing very soon. Yay. But you know where you can catch me. Um, including right back here next Tuesday. And if you're watching later, Tuesdays at 1 for Eastern, 9 UK time, 10 Central Europe, okay? And until that time, until we cross paths, however we do it, oh my gosh, folks, stay healthy, do all the things, stay woke, check the sources. It's going to get crazy here in the U.S. between now and election season. It already is, sadly. I guess what I'm saying is, trek well, everybody.